Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel O'Connor. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Monday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel here with Joel Elkanen and Dennis Dick on the show today. We're going to talk about some notable moves from Friday with the options expiration. We're going to uh, talk, or I'm sorry, quad wish that we had on Friday. We're going to talk about uh, JD is our leader of the morning. It's kind of moving up. But we have a feeling it'll move up, uh, lead to some action in the uh, a lot of those types of Chinese stocks today. So that, that'll, we'll talk about that. Talk about uh, general weakness in the market. We think China is just kind of making everyone a little bit cautious this morning. And uh, we'll take your questions from our chat. As always, premarket.benzinga.com, youtube.com slash Benzinga TV to to submit a ticker and uh, hang out with us, and we will uh, talk about tickers that you throw in there. Joel, what is doing this morning in the S and P's? We are in the red by twenty handles up. Big sell off overnight. We'll get to the reasons for that uh, in a few minutes. But uh, your pre market low right here, right now, sixty four even. Trading at 64 and a half, not getting a bounce, taking out Friday and the weekly low at 65 and a half. So it's going to be our big level moving forward. Below that, we got another 10 points on the downside. 2755.75 is your six day low. Uh, moving on to crude oil futures. Crude is in the red by 29 cents, under $65 at 64.78. Uh, this is a new low for the uh, little decline that we have here. So taking out the double bottom at 64.60. No, we did what? We were at 64.01, but this is a rolling contract. Gold up 370 at 1282.20. Silver back under $17, up seven and a half cents at $16.55. Bitcoin is trying to hold $6,000, down $85 at $6,430. Happy Father's Day, uh, Dennis. Did you get a lot of good gifts, I hope? <laughs> I always forget. It's funny. You know, you, you think about Father's Day and you naturally just think about your father. You don't think that you're a father, especially as a young father. So I honestly wasn't even really expecting it. But yeah, look at this nice shirt I got here. This one right yeah. here, Father's Day gift. Oh. My, it's my show shirt now. Maybe I'll wear this one every day. I yeah. can alternate between the other two shirts that I wear. You can, uh, you <laughs> but, can rotate. Yeah, so nice show shirt here. And yeah, it was a nice Father's Day. The only thing, it was hot. Hot, hot, hot at the cottage. I mean, usually you're on the water. Usually you got a breeze. Yesterday was just like dead heat. There was no breeze. There was just heat and humid. It kind of felt like Detroit. Oh, it was 95 here. Um, I had, Yeah, 95, 97. Got a couple swims in. Added uh, some new in Michigan tire uh, to my wardrobe. Something I didn't have. And Lisa really had to search. I got a Michigan swimsuit. A nice, oh, nice, you know, nice blue one with the black M and a Michigan towel. And then the girls got me a Justify t-shirt. You know, I figured I got the triple crown from the American Pharaoh <laughs> stuff. So, so you're going to wear the Justify uh, all I, around. Uh, yeah, just because my girls got it. For <laughs> I me. should say unjustified. Yes, it is. Just wait till you <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> we weren't going to get you started on horses here. We're all good. All right. So let's move into old markets here. We've got a little bit of a sell off here, two day sell off. And you know what? You see this stuff. And I kind of had the, you know, thinking, you know, my two day rule. If you guys listen to the show, you know, I talk about it. You had an outlier move there on Friday where we sold off after having, you know, basically four or five days of consolidation. So I figured there might be some follow through here today. And there is. That being said, I don't know if we're going into a steep sell-off here or not, but caution is the name of the game here this morning, and they are selling the winners and basically they're selling a little bit of everything here this morning. You know what was interesting about Friday's rally or Friday's sell-off too was gold. You know, everybody always says, oh, you got to have insurance. You got to have, you know, gold in your portfolio in case the market sells off. I tell you, that just does not work. I don't see gold as insurance. I see it you know, as its own trading animal. Yes, the correlation is not very close to the S&P, but just because the S&P sell off doesn't necessarily mean that gold is going to rally. And if you were playing that game on Friday, you got hurt bad because gold was down significantly along with the overall market. 
It did. It took a whooping and uh, trying to recover a little bit today. But just going, let's just talk pure market dynamics here. You had a quad witch on Friday, right? So there was a lot of positioning ahead of the expiration. Uh, also, we've talked about, you know, triple and quad witches being turning points a lot in the market. A yes. uh, strong resumption of the trend or a turn here. Uh, with those four highs up at 27.95 area from last That's week. Big. I say it's a turn here and it's a turn to go lower. I mean, we came back, we rallied nicely. I'm still sticking with our trading range. So let's, uh, we just hit 2,800 to the top of the trading range. I think it's time to go do some work at 2,700 and then maybe 2,600. I just don't think this is. Whoa, too- the bears are coming out here. All right. It's growling based though, Dennis. Cool. It's based. It's too on- early to be that bearish. It's, it's based- too early in the morning. It's 8.06 in the morning. We can't be that bearish at 8.06 in the morning. Oh, really? Maybe 807, 807. But it, uh, you know what? You've got a good argument here. I don't know 2600, but I think there could be some work on the downside. I'm just going to say that 280 level in the spy, you know, I like to talk spies, but which is obviously equivalent to the 2800 S&Ps. Yeah. You, you struggled there in March. We got all the way back up there and that's where we sold off from. So here we were for four days trying to fight our way through the 2800 level. We could not do it. We turn around and start going lower the last couple of days. So now resistance is very well defined. And technicians will look at this now and say, ooh, are we going to fail at the place that we failed in March? So all of a sudden you have the technical traders who are all you know banking on breakout thinking maybe that's not going to happen here now. So resistance is resistance until it's broken. And actually the bears are in a little more control here than they were just a few days ago. And think about this, Dennis, uh, the, those trying to sell on strength up there at the 27, let's call it 2,800. We'll talk wrong numbers here. Do you think they're, they're sitting there at that level? Or do you think they're bringing those, those offers down and say, hey, I am not going to get $27.95. They the might, yeah. They're bringing the offers down. And do you think all the people that are underinvested here to see the market turning, you know, you think they're sticking, you know, your long-term institutions, your big players, you think they're like, hey, oh, I, I got to step in here at 2760 because we're just going blowing through 2800. No, the bids are going to be lower. This is all about it's <laughs> Joel all about is bearish. It, no, I'm not bearish, Dennis. It's just the market dynamics. The bearish. sellers are gonna come down, and with everything that's going on with the tariffs, the buyers are just you know, it's different when the market's going up. You have these kind of rallies. Now that there's a turn, you know, that the big money, the big institutions are just not gonna be piling in at these levels, expecting we take out 2800 to go back to new all-time highs. We're in a trading range. So that is until we take out 2,800, as you would say, the path of least resistance is down. I, I think I'm on side with you here a little bit. And I'm still almost almost fully invested, but I've got some red flags here to look at. And I've talked with Deutsche Bank for the last month. How is Deutsche Bank? And I'm going to continue to talk about it because here we are with 1095. Yes, we did not make really new lows here on the move here on Deutsche Bank yet, but the chart is still not pretty. And you look at all the other European banks, they look ugly. And then you look at the US financials and they look like a complete mess. I mean, compared to you know, the overall market, you know, we've had S&Ps going straight up and the banks have not participated whatsoever. And that's concerning. So eventually if the banks can't catch a bid, eventually the rest of the market is probably going to start to roll over too. Yeah. And you talk about those turns on expirations. I've seen this so many times where you have the big Friday, the big third Friday of the month, third Friday, you know, when you're talking a big Friday because it was in June. So it's actually the third Friday of the second quarter. Uh, so, so those are even bigger. Sometimes those are major turning points. Remember the biotech rally from like, what was it like two years ago? We're up in, was it 2015 or 2016? Bring up the chart on the IBB. And you want to know the exact day that we topped out on the IBB? It was on uh, option expiration. I can remember that. It was, um, I think it was, I'm trying to go, yeah, 2015. So going back, I believe it was like the July expiration. Yep. And we topped out that day. And we have never come back. So you are right. They often happen on option expiration days, the major turning points. Was that a major turning point on Friday? Still to be determined. But it's not good for technician, the technical traders there that the S&Ps could not make new highs. And we started to roll over here. So caution, a little more caution. Not, I'm not bearish. Just a little more caution here right now. If you're sitting on a lot of profits here, maybe it's time to book some. And what, and what do you have? What do you have to pull us out of this caution zone here yet? Do you have earnings, major earnings? I mean, you have a couple earnings reports this week with uh, FedEx and Oracle. 
Uh, in three weeks, you get the start of the next right. one. So there's no drivers now. I mean, besides For a couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, analysts, you know, may come out and say some things, but they're, you know, they're sharpening their pencils, reviewing the last quarters. Also, what's the market trying to tell you, Dennis? What do, what do we see at the end of last week? And, uh, you know, on Friday, where was the money moving? Uh, well, obviously, in it was defense, defense. Playing major defense, and we, Joel, this is a segue right into what we have been talking about on the show and what Barron's highlighted here over the weekend. Consumer staples have been hot, hot right now. And if you look, we've been talking about them. And, I, you know, I even said on the Hershey's um, when, you know, it had the downgrade to sell from, who was that analyst that downgrade to sell? Oh, he um, was so um, late to the game. Who was that? So late to the game, man. That was who last, was it? It was Remember? last week. Um, yeah. It was like cr- Tuesday or credit, Wednesday. Credit Suisse was the one and they downgrade to sell and i came on the show and said i'd be buying i you know i'm a buyer of this downgrade because i think the worm had turned here you know and and um, for the food stocks i saw a lot of stocks going higher and getting a shot to buy her she's back near the lows i took that shot i bought her she's threw it in my swing trading portfolio at 90 dollars and 40 cents here it is three days later it's back at 94 so i'm pretty happy that i did that that was a call i made on the show it's, and what i did I went right after that i went out at that, you know, on that weakness in that day. And I was fading that call and I got the buy. And if you look at stocks like Kellogg's, you look at our Kraft Heinz, Joel, we're back, we're up in yeah. Kraft Heinz. Spencer, Some of these stocks have come back a long ways from the lows. And it's it was last week, they're just playing defense. Marcus, classic defense. I'm waiting for 62, Joel. You're waiting for 62? Yeah. You're waiting for 62 strength, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe you can uh, help Dennis and I out with our uh, sell orders there. No, uh, <laughs> I You're, might be selling it. No, <laughs> nah, nah, we were too. I we were both too early on the Kraft Heinz was a problem. We thought the old sixty was going to hold. It's come all the way back here. Uh, I, I probably I need some food in my portfolio, so I need to stick with one of these Hershey's or or, Kel, or, or Kraft Heinz. Hershey's is, and this is funny. You know, Hershey's is a, was a bought for a swing trade. I bought with the intentions of of just you know fading it and you know maybe plays catch up to the other food stocks and then I sell it. But now you look and you're like, sometimes you know the good thing, sometimes you can turn a swing trade into a longer term investment too. If you really, your thesis changed, you're like, I did get that on the good. Maybe I'm going to try to hold on to this for a little bit longer. It always, so many investors do it the other way where they buy a stock for a day trade or a swing trade. It starts to go against them. They're like, well, I can't sell now. And then it becomes a long-term investment. And then it starts to erode the portfolio. And then you just got a mess. Never let a trade turn into investment unless it's working for you. And if it's working for you, then you can do it. So you got a trade that you got at a really good price, and you're like, maybe I'm going to hold on to just a little bit of this. Maybe, you know, you buy 1,000 shares or something. Maybe I'll hold 100 or 200 and just not look at it for a while and see what happens. So you can do it that way. And th- you know what? I've turned a lot of trades into longer-term swing trades or investments that have made me a lot of money. So this Hershey's starting as a swing trade, a few day- days, it's come back. But I'm looking at it here, and there's no reason for me to sell it right now. And with the consumer staples starting to catch a bid, maybe I'll hold on to it for a little longer than I originally thought. And uh, boy, 94, just pulling up at the dailies, uh, your high for Friday was right at $94, even right on the kisser, close right near there. And then, man, you got other multiple highs here. So it's a little scary level yeah, right there. I mean, like if you were really a swing trader and you were only, I should be selling it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I, I should be ringing the register on Hershey's right now if it was a, if I stick with the three swing trade thesis. So I'm torn. I'm going to keep one. Of them. I'm going to keep Kraft Heinz or Hershey's. I have to determine which one I'm going to keep. I mean, so just, I got a food stock still in my portfolio. And let, just for which one would you keep? You already have Kraft Heinz. Yeah, I already got Kraft Heinz. I'm going to buy Hershey's. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I had to do this. I'll sit here the fundamentals. Get my you know get my pen out. Crunch the numbers like my CFA tells me to do. And uh, see which one, you know, I like better long term. Uh, June 13th, uh, that was the day, that was in the morning. And that was the day that the stock actually made the low of the move. Uh, well, for the, not the actual low, low of the move, but that's when it dipped under $90 at 89.84, closed the day at 91.22. So, uh, you know, that's kind of was the thesis when we got into the Kraft Heinz. The stocks reacted positively to good news, but uh, Hershey's, uh, 94, uh, that's a big level. Let's just take a quick look. Uh, Barron's hopped on this theme as, as, as sure. well over the weekend. So let's just do quick technical analysis. And I know these aren't like super sexy stocks and everything, but they, they pay dividends. They can pay the bills. Uh, Kellogg is way off. It's low. It's almost 10 points off. It's low. Big time back. Yeah. Back. 
cereal is back. It's filling a gap here from uh, March. I'm using 67. That's my level there. We hit it yesterday, gets above 67 and hold, looking for greener skies. Uh, let's also look, Dennis. Look at Campbell's. Uh, this is like Campbell's was literally on the lows of the move June 7th. That's a week and a half ago. It's been up one, two, three, four, five, oh. six, seven days in a row. Seven days up for Campbell's CPB. Oh, and look how I gave you that little triple bottom. Now it's in the gap. It's trying to fill the gap up to 39. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's a turn, too. I mean, these things turned. I, I mean, three lows in that area. That is designed a new filter for me. Uh, double or triple bottoms on major stocks uh, when they turn and then go up. Uh, that's what uh, I need for the filter. Uh, let's see, Procter and Gamble. Let's just take a look at PG. That's it's trying. Yeah, it's it's trying. trying. Not not as pronounced, but it filled the guy. It's come back off the lows, too. Coca-Cola. Hale had a big move on Friday. It yeah. came out. Yep. These things will come back. GIS, General Mills. Yep, although might. it's got some problems at 46 coming up. They're coming back. The food stocks are coming in the comeback oh, trail. Yeah. Do you think it's just a rally to sell, though? Do you think, do you think, okay, let's just sit back and analyze here. Now you got Barron's talking about it. You got everybody else. Oh, the food stocks are back in love. And I, I don't know. Do you think you're at a point here now where eventually, you know, the market does turn and start to go higher here and food stocks, you know, start to go and we go back to the same way we've been trending, you know, risk on market because it's risk off. This is just a classic risk, risk off trade. Do you think this is a longer term trend or do you think this is a short term trend? And do you think this is something that maybe, you know, we should be fading? Uh, I'm not fading it. I think it's a major long term trend here. These stocks have really been beat up. Uh, I think people still eat food. I mean, I think you had the whole you know, Am Amazon. Was still, I don't have any eat much Campbell soup. So the girls do like double noodle, no chicken. Uh, it's just, a t I mean, it's just like the Kroger and, the, you know, the, the death of retail because of Amazon and Whole Foods and everything. And I don't know. I mean, these companies, I just think it's cyclical. And I think you could be seeing some major long term bottoms here and like Kraft Heinz. You know, I'm not selling it at 60 or 61 or 62 and I'm not selling it at 55. I'm just going to hold on to it for years and years and years and maybe. Nice it. little dividend. Yeah. And probably you're going to be eating ketchup here probably in the next 20 exactly. years. Exactly. Exactly. And you <laughs> catch up and craft dinner. And I mentioned when it's you a good mentioned, combination uh, on the show here. Yeah. Craft dinner. That could be one of the dinners I owe you. Uh, Mondelez got. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can't be. It was defined as a steak dinner. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they got steak in some of their soups. Oh, uh, man. Mondelez 40. <laughs> Don't even go there. Mondelez is the, is the, uh, the level in uh, to keep an eye on for. Mondelez, 41 bucks. I like that for another major breakout. It broke there. out through 40. That was a major breakout yeah. there. So as long as it stays above 40, I will say the bulls are probably in control there too. So it's looking better for some of these stocks here. So not all ugly. But if you want to go to ugly, and maybe, well, before we go to ugly, let's give her a chat some love here because they've all been buying JD.com and they've been talking about JD for a while here. And they're getting rewarded this morning. So that's where we got some news. Google. Yeah. GoogleJD.com, yeah. what's going on? Google is, has invested $550 million in JD.com in return. They have received about $27 million uh, J, uh, A shares of JD.com at a uh, price of twenty twenty nine dollars per share. Whoa, that's a good buy. Man, I, I like Google. <laughs> when they can well, buy it's 20, I, I, sh I should rephrase, $20, $29, uh, $40, uh, $58 uh, as, as the conversion goes. So, Forty dollars and fifty eight yes. cents. So they're still getting a nice little discount there. So it's nice when you're big and powerful, and you know, we'll, we'll give a little money back behind you, but we want to buy your shares on the cheap. That's the little Warren Buffett approach there. So Google playing the little Warren Buffett yes. approach. So let's see what we're doing here. We're getting a little pop. We're up two sixty seven here at forty six twenty six. Just a nice rally here. Let me give you your pre market high. I mean, after this kind of rally and this kind of news, I you know, not would it be fading it, but I sure would like to see it clear that initial surge. It hit 47.80 and made three other cracks at that. So that's my resistance. Longer it takes to get to 47.80, I think you get some back and fill in here. You need to get down to uh, 43.88 to fill the gap. So extended move here. And isn't this the second major company to make an uh, investment in JD.com? Didn't uh, Walmart 
make a huge investment in it or am I making that up? No, I remember something like this. It's a while ago. Didn't yeah. Walmart do an investment JD too? Let's see. I feel like they did. I'm you're you're going back a ways, but I, I can't see I I'm remembering that too. Uh well, okay, we'll have uh Spencer's hunt hunting in the background, but I think they did. So yeah. Angie, Angie Baby's saying yes, they did too. Okay, so, so I think I think they did. Jump uh, over uh just and I was gonna take you into stocks that are not looking as pretty here. So we did a lot sure. of pretty stocks this morning, but there's a lot of stocks that are getting beat up. We talked about the banks already, they're getting beat up, but some of the tax stocks are starting to roll over too, and it's just some of them. But, I mean, we talked about the semis, and the semis are not looking as pretty. Micron down here again today. Did not have a great Friday. Has not had a good couple of days. Applied Materials is down here again. Lamb Research. So the semis, not looking pretty whatsoever. I mean, the Lamb Research chart is just flat out ugly. We talked about this on Friday. Continues to look ugly here. I don't see anything really to 170. So that could get even uglier. But what about, you know, a little rollover in some of the big guns? Like Microsoft has been going straight up. It was an ugly candle on Friday. Was it a turning point for Microsoft? It's back under a hundred bucks. Uh this oh well, I see it at a hundred point uh one three. Oh, no, that's a cross. So that's ignore a cross. that. The offer is nine nine forty eight. Oh, Dennis with that. Uh let's see here. It's losing a hundred. It's been a psychological level. Bunch of highs at a hundred point five oh. I don't know. I mean, where are we at? Uh there's just support all over the place. I, you know, I'm not going to. You think so? Though, stop. What really big level do you see in Microsoft here? I want to know. And let's do a little education. So okay. we're looking at support as two different things. I like to see the level jumping right out at me. I know you're looking at old lows, and sure, you know the thing's been in an uptrend, so there's going to be lows all over the place. But really, what level really? And when you bring up this chart and you look at it in two seconds, what really jumps out at you? I don't see anything. Ninety-seven. Why ninety-seven? Why? Why? Because on May 24th, you had a low at 96.81. And then two days later, you had a low at 97.23. So 97. Those are 50 cents apart. You're reaching there. There's buddy. not 57, but what's, a, what's in the middle? Cents. What's in the middle of those two? Nothing. 97. Nothing. I don't see anything until 95. Nine... I'm looking at this. Okay. I don't see much in there. Okay. I, think you, I don't think you're going to whoosh to it, but I don't see much in there either. All right. I, I'll... <laughs> I would give it two stars and I'll give uh, 95 three stars, <laughs> Dennis. And also, so I'm looking at the perspective of what are you going to see today, right? I mean, you think you're going to see 95 today? No, no not. No, but you know, we're, we're just trying to set things up here. Different time frames. Not every trader is a day trader here either. I say it's below 100 bucks. Bears get interested. It's back down to, you know, you know back trading below that psychological $100 level. Okay. I, I'm the, some of these tech stocks are not looking as good as they once did. Like the Qs really haven't sold off too hard here. I mean, we're down 175, 21. So it's, it's still, you know, overall uptrend. But Apple down below 190 here again. Microsoft showing a little bit of weakness. Tesla's in the news today. It might struggle back at the same level it struggled at before this 360 area was back in March. And uh, the news there's on news Tesla. here on Tesla news me. today. Spencer, there is news on Tesla. What's that? Well, there's always news on Tesla. The issue oh, is there's a big headline. The issue, well, there's like four different headlines. The one that I saw from over the weekend was that some uh, uh, actress and Hollywood writer tweeted that her husband's car caught fire while driving randomly. And that, that went viral over the weekend. Is that what you're referring uh, to? No, I saw Musk. A Musk tweet. Oh, the, 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 the three internal... weeks The three weeks thing? That, that's what you're referring to? The, the, Musk says that the shorts have three weeks before their position explodes. Is that it? Oh, oh, stop. You're missing the, the, the there was a Musk uh, that he's talking about internal tweet or something. I saw it go by uh, that they are talking um, that they're going to have to ramp up production to meet their numbers. Uh, that, that went by this morning on the headlines on my Twitter feed. So I'm sure we must have that somewhere in there. That, there's a reason the stock's down four points too, because it's been a honey badger stock. I'm pretty sure something went, Musk said something about ramping up something to hit production numbers. I'm going to go you know, look for that too, but I saw that go by. Unless I jumped that up in my sleep. I'm pretty sure there's a headline there uh, that they're worried oh, about. Right. Oh, right. Oh, okay. The radical improvements thing. Right. Okay. Yeah, that was on a Friday. Yeah. The, the After the bell though. Right, right, right. He said the radical improvements will need to be made if they, need, if they, if they are, are to reach their, their Model 3 production goal. And that sounds scary when they're, and that was, it was Musk that said that, wasn't it? Right. It, it, was, it was a memo to like his staff. Yeah, that's right. what I'm talking yeah. about. So, and that sounds concerning to me when you've got, you know, the CEO saying, "Ooh, we better start doing something. We're going to hit our numbers." 
not many people focused on this today, but I saw that headline and I thought, ooh, that's not good news. So I'm actually surprised Tesla's not down more on that news. But regardless, it's a honey badger stock. We know everybody just wants to own this thing right now. There's probably underneath demand. But we did struggle back here, Joel. The technical analyst and you must be looking at this 360 level and saying, man, we have been up here a half dozen times before and struggled to get through it. Yep. And now face. we're back here again. And now we get a bad headline coming out. I, I don't know. 360 still remains major resistance to me. Yeah, I'm... I'm uh... I'm still chewing on a, a few of those Tesla puts here. So, uh, oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, I, I need a, I need a pretty big move. I need to ramp up in volatility here. Kind of, kind of ill timed on that one, but uh, I'll, I'll stick with it. It's a very small position. Uh, one that has my interest, though, this morning that, and I just don't know why, I just my contrarian blood. I just had to take a shot at that IQ on Friday, Dennis. I just you bought puts on that, eh? Yeah, I did. I did. I just, I mean, for no other reason than I just feel just un- overdone. I just feel un-American just letting a stock go from uh, twenty to forty, you know, with no fun. It, it's probably time to start thinking about ringing the register in this. I, I get your point there. On Friday, we kind of had a reversal day on a lot of these things. Got up to forty-three dollars, felt overblown, and then it closed on and got down to forty. Still uptrend, still hard uptrend in these things. Yep. So it's hard to just get bearish on them. I still own IQ. Um, I've sold two thirds of my position. I've sold my so- SOGO. I've still got Dropbox, although that's on, you know, a little bit of watch here too. Need Dropbox to get over 40 if it's going to resume there. So I'm still playing these things uh, from the long side, but IQ, I'm getting itchy on here to sell. And Dropbox, I'm just watching closely. I'm not, you know, it's two days, nice big moves in Dropbox. I'm sitting on a nice little gain in it. I'm not going to let the gain go away. So I had some, some point in time I'm going to stop out on, on, on the sell because that was just a swing trade. And it's been a hell of a swing trade. I mean, I'm up, up like, I don't know, even know what I'm up, like 10 points or no, eight points in on a $31 stock. I'm up like 25% in less than th- three days. <laughs> it's kind of hard not to book some of that. No, I know. And, uh, you know, it's nice because they don't have weeklies on it. So I had to go all the way out to July to, uh, so I got, it I, could be a good call. It could come back in for five bucks in a hurry, but it already did. I mean, it got a 43. It's already almost up five from the high it just made on Friday. Right. And it, it had the, I mean, the, the reversal is one thing that I took a lot, uh, look at there. And, um, I also looked at it, man, oh man, the volume on this thing, 45 million 250,000 on Thursday, Crazy. 62 million traded on Friday. It feels like it's starting to get an upside capitulation. It's like, right? okay, I want to be long now. All right, I this is it. This is late like to the party. Everybody jumping in the pool here because it was 95 degrees. Now, who's I mean. Do you want it? Would you try long here? At, uh, at- no, but I'm still long it. So I'm That's kind different. of in the hold territory. I'm up so far in it. Below 35, I don't want any part of it. It's like, am I going to give it down to there or am I going to lighten up? I'm already was itching. To, I was kind of hinting I was going to sell it on Friday. I did not. I wish I would. I've sold, I sold the SOGO. That was another one that was just high flying there. And it got over $15. I got on the 14 handle, so I got out a little bit too soon. But now it's back 1366. I mean, this thing was nine bucks oh, you know, two, two weeks ago two and a half weeks ago. So it's just about now. These things have gone up so much, so fast. It's like, take some money off the table, lighten up or, you know, sell out. And what, what is the Kramer saying that he always says? And sometimes it applies to stuff like this. It's, uh, well, you know it, Joel. You say pigs get slaughtered or what Bulls is it? make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. Yeah, so we're kind of being a pig if we don't book some of these profits. You know, 50% on a stock in two weeks. I mean, for a stock, you know, on SOGO that, you know, it's only been out there a few months, but I mean, these are absolutely crazy moves. So got to lighten up. Yep. And, uh, you know, just keep an eye on, on the price. I mean, there are retracements um, in here. Uh, Mr. Left hasn't hopped on any of these yet. So that's uh, that's also uh, something to keep an eye on. Uh, in the long run, we don't know here. These stocks could still, you know, be going up. I'm just saying short run here. Correct. You're sitting on these as trades, which I was. It's hard not to book, you know, especially in the case of IQ. You're talking about a stock I'm up over 100% on. I've had it for a month. I mean, it's hard not to book those gains. If you're sitting on them and throwing them in the long-term invest portfolio, different story. I don't know where IQ or any of these things are going to be long-term. All I know is short-term, they are definitely overbought. So what do you got on balances here? It's, it's a 8.30. We just check it out. 8.30 mark. Uh, 
big orders on Friday. All sells. They're all sells. Yeah, not big, but they're 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 notable. Twitter and Twitter obviously had a little bit of a reversal day on Friday as well. It got all the way up to forty seven seventy nine before closing down at forty five eighty. It's down another forty cents. So we're talking about two and a half bucks off the highs here now for Twitter. A lot of the high flyers, you know, did reverse on Friday. Alibaba fifty thousand to sell. Baba has just struggled. We have talked about this 210 level. It is. It got up there a few times. It did get above it, 211 there, but it's just kind of getting tired up there at 210, 211. And it's been an impressive move for Alibaba too. I mean, you know, it's a bigger stock, so it's not going to move like these little ones, but 170 bucks back in May. Here you're a month and a half later, 210, 40 points on $170 stock. Not a bad move. So, you know, maybe it's time for a little profit taking there too. I see Disney with the 66,000 shares sell on balance. It got downgraded to sell at Pivotal here today. I will tell you on Disney, I am long Disney. I actually like Disney. And just in the same way that I bought the Hershey's when Credit Suisse uh, put them down to sell, I think I'd be fading the Disney uh, downgrade here too. I think Disney has life here again. A pretty good movie over the weekend. I like Disney from a valuation perspective. Still think it's one of the best media companies out there. And then they have the parks, which I was at on, back in February. And those things are busy as hell. Uh, I like Disney. You get the 104, 105 area in Disney, you get a shot to buy it. I think you can't go wrong long term. And I do own this in my best portfolio. Okay. Yeah. You should take a look at that, uh, that Barron's article just talking about since. Uh, did they talk? Disney? Yeah, they did. They talked. Uh, I mean, what did they say? well, they just talked about since, um, since AT&T did the deal with Time Warner. Like the media stocks have been really, you know, the content stocks have been really flat and all the tech companies have taken off and that they just, you know, thought that, you know, there's going to be eventual, you know, survivors and the people they talked about Verizon, uh, you know, not spending the money in the pipes. They taught Disney with the content. Uh, Disney's also coming out with uh, some uh, things to compete with Netflix, some of their own streaming stuff. Yeah, for sure. So Disney also, hey, I heard Disney had an amazing weekend. Another amazing weekend. Uh, their new uh, Incredibles 2 was the box office leader. I saw this stat this morning uh, of the 10 highest grossing uh, domestic films this year disney has nine of them u.s that's I, incredible wait, i i should wait rephrase that u.s uh opening weekend a uh, box office results. disney is nine of the ten. Nine of the top 10 are from disney this they year. just produce the best content you can talk about but they're these guys are producing you know movies that are you know 200 million dollars and i mean i just i cannot grasp the concept that Netflix can be worth more than Disney. It makes absolutely no sense hey, to me. Uh, As a chartered CNBC, financial analyst, you know what? this makes zero sense to me. You know what? I, I'm going to put an article in, in in the chat right now that I read on Thursday or Friday. A very good kind of analysis on, on what Netflix did to the, to the industry and why Netflix is worth what it's worth compared to Disney and why that kind of sort of makes sense. And it was yeah, a, I want to read it just because really I like breakdown. seeing the contrarian view here and the opposite view of my own view. But I just think conceptually thinking, I mean, Disney has just been around for so long. Maybe they're getting old, but I'm, Netflix is really just blockbuster online. Is it not? No, no. I mean, no, they, it's they not. produce some content. <laughs> it's, not. <laughs> it's not. No, seriously, though. They brought Seriously. Blockbuster. Blockbuster Video was a you know a great business for a long time. Netflix murdered Blockbuster Video for sure. I mean, you know, maybe it was murdered before then with some other things, but you know, they brought you know this two year thing and, and gave it to you for nine ninety five per household. So they they reintroduced it all and said, hey, you can watch all these movies. You know, that you're going to go rent at a video store and every single one for a membership fee of nine ninety five. Here we are. It's right on your TV right now. It's ingenious. To Netflix genius, great business model. I have Netflix. I'm all for it. But really, you know, let's stop and think what else are they, they you know, you compare it to Disney. They don't have any parks. They don't have any, you know, they're not really making, you know, high end movies. Yes, they're producing content on their on their own thing, but they're not putting blockbuster movies like, you know, Avengers or or this other one. What what was the movie from this weekend? So one uh, two hundred million the, this weekend? The, the Incredibles two. Are they producing this kind of animation? Are they doing all these kind of things? I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it, yes, Netflix is awesome, but is of, it worth more than Disney? That's I, I think it's I think it's crazy. I think we're going to look back on this in five years and say, you know, when you see Disney's worth, you know, maybe you know two or three times more than Netflix. I'm honestly going to say that right now. Five years from now, I think we're going to say, wow, that was crazy. 
And uh, I'm saying it right now. It's crazy. Well, one thing uh, that this article that I put it in the in the in the chat room, okay. uh, and it, it kind of breaks down is just Wall Street. In Wall Street's opinion, Netflix they love it when Netflix spends money, just keep on spending money, and they don't love it when. Uh, like Disney or or Time Warner or anyone else spends money. It's like the game is rigged in Netflix's favor because yeah, any, anytime anytime Netflix spends money, that's a that's a win. That that's that's well, the, it's the same thing with Tesla. Right, it's the same thing. Right, the Tesla. game is rigged in their favor. It, it is right now, but those sure. things don't last. Like it, it, this take us back to 1999, Joel. Think about you know how many things you know, and and I'm not saying you know Netflix, but I kind of am to a certain extent that this is getting frothy. You know, Netflix has a real business. They have some value. They have, you know, created something incredibly that everybody wants to spend their 10 bucks a month to have. So props to Netflix for that. I just think valuation now has gotten so extreme that I can't get on board with it here. Uh, but, you know, I like the product and I'm you know, a subscriber to the product. So I do like Netflix. But I just look at back, you know, 1999 and you had a lot of other good companies, too. And some of these were real. Some of these weren't. But. It was all about, you know, well, you know, it's a new internet. And all I heard back then in 1999 was how value investing is dead. Value investing doesn't work anymore. Warren Buffett needs to change his approach. You can go Google articles from 1999. We'll find multiple articles on how Warren Buffett's approach is dead in 1999. Do you want to know something? 1999 was exact like bottom for Berkshire Hathaway stock after having a rough couple of years because he wasn't participating in the whole tech bubble. And since then, I want to know what Berkshire Hathaway is up since 1999. It's got to be an incredible amount. I bet you it's up 500% since then, maybe more, if you go back and look at the chart. Uh, so yep. I tell you in the long run, long, long run, it's still about making money. It's still about you know investing in companies that you know can produce numbers. If Netflix can throw up in the long run, can throw up you know, 10, 20, 30 bucks a share, 30 bucks a share in profits, it's worth 300 bucks. But in the long run, if they're just growing sales, eventually that will get old and they'll need to start seeing them make serious amounts of money. And if Netflix earnings power is only five bucks a share long run or 10 bucks a share, 20 bucks a share, it starts to even get expensive. It needs to be making, basically if you go 20 times, it needs to be making 20 bucks a share eventually. If you believe it can do that, it's worth 400 bucks. I don't know if I believe it can make 20 bucks a share. Maybe it can. And it's just the expansion, you know, it's just where, where they're going and the potential people. And that is, you know, and that's what they're, I don't know what countries they're in or how far they've gone, but they're, you know, until, I mean, it's looking at as far as like standing out in front of this freight train. I mean, just wait to that first uh, quarterly report where they uh, note a, uh, a drop in subscriptions the stock's going to be down like 150 bucks. But until that happens. But you know what? It's not going to have that. And, and one thing going to drive it here, Joel, is this they've cut back on, you know, having multiple accounts. They're smart. So remember how you had four or five subscribers on the account? Now you're only allowed two. So they're getting people who weren't subscribing to subscribe all of a sudden. So I don't think you're going to see the subscriber numbers bad. It could have some legs here for a while. I'm not, right. this isn't the case to come out and short Netflix. I am not shorting Netflix. The thing's going straight up. How do you come here and short Netflix? My argument here when we started this segment five minutes ago was just that I think long run, I don't see how Disney is worth less than Netflix. So I'm a buyer of Disney, not selling Netflix here because this thing is hot and these things just continue to get hotter. So Netflix is the classic case of too high to chase, you know, too hot to short. Uh, Disney, though, on the other hand, I believe has got good value here. And that was where I started the argument was I think there's good value in Disney. At these prices. So you are going to short Netflix and buy more Disney. And I'm quick, buying Disney. I just I said I'm not shorting Netflix. You didn't listen to anything I said. I'm Tell putting the much. spread on. I was joking I'm with you. I'm not putting it on. I'm just flat out long Disney, and I'm a buyer of Disney on pullbacks. And it started with Pivotal downgrading to sell. Pivotal, sorry, guys. I'm fading you. I'm a buyer of Disney at these prices. So I own Disney. I'll buy more Disney if it gets lower in the hundreds because I think there's good value here long run Can, for right, Disney. What is the to... argument? Do we have the Pivotal note? What is their argument for downgrading to sell today? Well, I think they're. I haven't, I think seen, I haven't seen anything besides the the actual downgrade itself. So. I'll read the note here. I'll get it over today, the course of the day. Get it in front of me. I want to read it, and I'll come back to you guys tomorrow on this. Remind me, because I want to know why the hell they downgrade to sell. Because I completely disagree with this. All right, can I want to catch up real quick here uh, in the Google chat? We got a lot of questions coming up here. Sure. Yeah, uh, BZ Tokyo. Uh, what's up with CRSP? 
And uh, if you read your Barron's, you would have saw that uh, there was a little article on how these gene editing stocks at the sell off was overdone. There was a lot of fancy words in there. It was gene. It was uh, edit and, or CRSP. And I don't have my other note here. So looking for a little rebound. It's only up 60 cents on this after just a really, really bad, uh, bad couple weeks. So I would look for uh, continuation. If you want to look for resistance here, 62.75. Uh, we're not even over Friday's high yet. So there's just a couple levels, 60.75 and 62.75. If this is real, that the news is not as bad, then this should. Yeah, that, easily... that's, that's, that seems to be the, 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 the story now. Is, remember the story from what was it now? Was it two weeks ago now or last week when uh, the, they potentially cause uh, cancer? But now we're getting the stories really. And so actually, someone did say this in the chat the morning of. I forget who said it. Maybe it was John Dodson. I forget. But uh, so, and now the story seems to be that, that that study that came out saying that these drugs potentially do cause cancer was missed sort of the nuance and it wasn't new information. And the, the panic was all overblown. So that seems to be the, the, the story uh, right now. I mean, you got to do your homework on these stocks. I would just, you know, take a look at the, you know, the recent moves uh, and, you know, see if you could get back half of that move and, uh, you know, get some stability and go back up and test the highs. But uh, Barron's is up. Just that's the reason that it's uh, trading in the green. Uh, that is uh, edit and uh, crisp. Uh, we have uh, someone, Jazla Man, uh, was playing a uh, Micron. Uh, I think with puts last week, and now he's looking at straddles. Big level here. Micron's down 43 cents. Absolutely has to hold 56.60. Uh, you had a pair of lows there. You're trading at 57.80. So that's still a buck 40 away from support. And what else did we see in here as far as stocks to take a look at? Um, Brick A was at uh, 40,800 in March of 2000. So uh, we all know where was it uh, in in March of 2000. It was at 40,800 brick uh, a brick a yeah, it's two hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars now. So since, you know, value investing was officially claimed dead by so many media people in the media back in 1999, Warren Buffett's value approach is up, what, 700 percent. That's got to be one of the best. Like, if you just stop and look, what is really up besides Amazon? What's up like 700, 800 percent since 1999, 2000? Hmm. I mean, the overall market, the Nasdaq. If it was when tech was 5100, Nasdaq's what's what are we on the Nasdaq now? So I don't even know where we are. Where are we on the Nasdaq? I look at the queues. So uh, bu 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 seven. Well, you you could just do it from the queues too. When uh, how far do you want to go back in the queues? No, what are we today? What's the value of the NASDAQ? I remember what it was. What's NASDAQ right now? 77.50. Yeah, so, and we were 5,199. So we were up 50% in the last 18 years. Warren Buffett's up 700%. Cool. I tell you, man, uh, trading is a completely different animal, but in long term investing, it's all about making profits. It's all about money being made on the bottom line. And when you look 20 years from now, the companies that are making good money on the bottom line, those are the ones that are going to outperform the overall market. I still like value investing long run. I'm sticking with it. Yeah. Warren Buffett, smart cookie. Okay. All right. Uh, 843 here. S&P's made a low at 63.50. Uh, now getting back, trying to stay above Friday's low. Friday's low was uh, 65 and a half, and that was also the weekly low. So, uh, big, you know, getting above support, uh, important in the market so far today. I love to see us get mid range on the session. That's up at 27.75 in a quarter. Uh, Ed Parker, just take it back to the Disney. Ed sure. Parker in the chat with the save. He's saying that the about this downgraded day was based on them overpaying for Fox. Okay, you know, I can get on board with that to a certain extent. I don't want them to overpay for Fox. I think it's getting silly here. Comcast is going to make them pay up. Really, though, they're going to get some stuff out of it. Disney finds a way to make money with it. But, you know, as a shareholder at Disney, I honestly hope they don't win the Fox bidding war. But anyways, you know, it, it's assumed they're going to pay up. It's shareholders still voting, you know, with their money here. And it's assumed that Disney's probably still going to win here. And Disney's shares were rising last week. So I think they can make it work out and make money with them in the long run. But um, I agree. I, I wish they wouldn't pay a huge premium for Fox. 
All right, uh, let's uh, switch gears here uh, to ratings. And uh, we do have some, uh, besides the Disney rating here, by uh, that was Brian Wisner. And um, he also downgraded Discovery, uh, but that was from a buy to a hold and uh, not from a hold to a sell. Uh, Probably just went up too much too fast. Right. I mean, Discovery has blasted off into orbit since we started in the Fox bidding war here. 21 bucks to 27 and change now. So it's down here this morning, DISCA or DISCB. You can pick your uh, poison on that one. Both stocks, or actually it's DISCA and DISC. Is there three listings for that one? Uh, yeah, DISCK and DISCA. And then there's DISCB that doesn't really trade. So don't trade the B, it's too illiquid. So do the DISCA or DISCK. Why well, have three stocks? Same thing. They should be downgraded just for that reason. There's too many stocks of the same company. <laughs> Okay, uh, another another uh, notable move here by analyst uh, by Raymond James on uh, Chevron Corporation. Uh, yeah, market performed, outperform here. You did have the nice rally in oil here. We have, are peeling back off that seven dollars. Yeah, oil log. looks broken. Yeah, uh, who? I don't know about this one, Dennis. I no, mean, fading. Yeah, I'll fade that. Yeah, uh, I'm a seller of Chevron on the pop. I think if you get a Chevron anywhere over 125, I mean, I'd love to get up at 127, 128 again. Yeah. There's all kinds of resistance up there. I don't think you get a shot at that, though. So you might have to be sooner than that. But if this thing opens up because of an upgrade here this morning and gets up to 125, 126, I think it's a fade. And Chevron really, if I was just to look at them, and uh, yeah, you got a decent dividend, Chevron, 3.61%. But um, Exxon Mobil has not performed nearly as well in the last little while. Chevron, Chevron's back up near its highs. Exxon Mobil still significantly off its highs. Like back in 2014, Exxon Mobil got up to almost 110, straight at 80. Chevron back in 2014 got up to like 133. We're at 125. I mean, if you're looking at something with more meat on the bone here from the short side, I think it's Chevron. So I'm fading these analysts today. Fading Pivotal, yeah. fading RJ. Sorry, guys, I don't agree. I'm uh, I'm a fan of the sell. Maybe I'm gonna put on the pair trade, and I'll put uh, the Chev the Disney long against the Chevron. <laughs> sure, you've done you've done stranger spreads. <laughs> Completely different sectors, just fading analyst trade. Uh, I just want to uh, illustrate kind of with this uh, Chevron daily chart here, kind of what I was talking about in the S and P's. You know, you had uh, institutions trying to wiggle out at the one thirty dollar area. That's uh, on the chart here, you can see the multiple highs from 129 and change up to 131.08. So basically, you can figure they were they were targeting the 130 area. Uh, they didn't want to sell on weakness here. It went down to 122. But on the rally, the, those 130 offers came down to the 128 area, and they tried to wiggle out of the position here. So I still think you got some big money trying to sell this stuff on rallies. So I am not going to be buying this short term or long term. Uh, what about the goose? The goose. We didn't talk about the goose. Did you see that move? That move was insane. Insanity. It opened up 46. It opened up at like 53 and ran another eight box. A gap and go. Gap and go back again. That was a crazy move, Joel. Where goose. Did, goose is loose. Actually, it opened up at 59 and sold off a bit, yeah, but then it ended up coming tough. back. Yeah. I mean, come that on. That was a wild trade. The How, Canada geese. The rare Canada goose. You know, those uh, that they're making. Those are such a rare bird. You don't really see those. Do you, do you have those jackets? <laughs> I don't have 50 of them in my yard right now. You have matching jackets for the entire family. I bet. I and bet you drop four, four K on uh, those jackets. If I knew how to sew, I could actually just you know not even pay to. Buy. <laughs> no, we don't want to get the Greenpeace people on us. So we we like the Canada geese. We just don't like their poop all over our yard. It's yeah, it, uh, Canada. I mean, what do you want to say about it? Uh, I had an unbelievable day on Friday. <laughs> On big volume, 45.85 to 61.02. Trading up in the pre-market, kind of flat though. You do find someone a little willing to sell here uh, at 61.70. So use 61.70, 62 even. Nice round number uh, if you're looking for a potential exit. But uh, if you're taking any cues from uh, Tiffany, we would just kept on going after the rally. Or restoration hardware. Whoo, that's trading down 262 here. That had a nice move. Uh, that had filed through after its earnings. Uh, keeping an eye on 152. Where is that? 158 and a quarter. But uh, big move in restoration 
hardware. Uh, let's talk. Uh, you want to talk any more ratings here, Dennis? Any anyone stick out to you? I see. Let's go through them quick. We got HIBB catching a downgrade at Bank of America. That is to underperform. So that's equivalent of sell. Ooh. So Revan probably not going to be happy about that one here. But it's come off significantly off the high. He's still long at bat, or did he sell out? I don't. He had it for a while. He bought that low. He bought that like nine bucks, didn't he? Nine, yeah. ten bucks. He was like right on the low as he was buying that. He was a genius on that one. I remember that. He's probably selling in the strength, but maybe he must have, have sold it. I yeah. bet you he saw it. He'd be up a lot of money in that. So, anyways, it's it's down here this morning. Uh, Disney, we already talked about Tava catching an upgrade at Wells Fargo, still trading down. Again, that's trading overseas. So sometimes the uh, you know the ratings from over here don't matter as much on those. Uh, cake, we got C A K E catching down. Who who downgraded Cake Spencer Cheesecake Factory? It was BTIG, buy to neutral. That stock's trading down, or actually it hasn't traded all this morning, but it's offered down, best bid's way down there. So probably going to be trading uh, significantly lower, I would think, here today. Yeah. Big, big, big day, though, on Friday. Yeah, wow. What happened on Friday with this? Up three points on big well, there volume. News? Was there a headline that drove this on Friday? I, I missed this. Uh, let's see here. Cake. Um, on Friday... There was no questionable takeover chatter. I don't think that what it was chatter. I don't think anything. Yeah, Yeah, that's 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 well, had to be something because that thing was hot as hell on Friday. So, okay, we'll caution then. Okay, um, Miami option in the Google chat is asking about uh bookings, uh, the old price line BK and G here. Nice recovery after earnings. Boy, I'd like to really see it get to 2160. A uh, pair of highs there, not from last week, but from the, the week before. And what a nice, I think you had a 21.58.26. That was your low. And then you gapped down and then you came up. Wow. And the gap, you got very close to there. 21.57. So I'd really like to see this thing give over 21.60 and keep going or else I think a little bit of uh, profit taking here. Nice, nice move off. Uh, Earnings getting killed. Dennis, any comments on Priceline, bookings, corporate? Just the fact that these things seem like they're the buy the dip stocks. It seems like whenever booking, I know Nick Shaheen is out there, and he whenever that thing goes down 200 points, he writes butts. And man, he has been right all the time because every time this thing falls, has an earnings report, falls 200 bucks or something, it seems like a month later it's right back. So stock that it seems to always come back, the classic BTFD stock, that continues to come back here. So hard to get on the bearish booking train here. Um, it has these significant pullbacks, but long-term just seems to go higher. That trip advisor continues to move. I mean, this has been an incredible run here as for it as well, since it had its gap and go $45, now 58 bucks. So it continues to run. Expedia has come a long ways back too. It was kicking around $100, $105 for a long time, back at 124. So it's come back and rallied 20 points in the last month and a half. So uh, these online travel sites are performing pretty well as of late. All right. Uh, let's see here. Just talking about the Reverend. Uh, he's been pounding the table in that geothermal systems and GEOS. Yeah. It, it man. It gave I don't it, follow his story. Is there, what's the uh, it it's value, value play? Yeah, in life? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, the Reverend has the value pegged up like much higher. Much, much higher, like near 100 bucks. You know what? He's been doing pretty good lately, hasn't he? The Rev. Yeah. A lot of his stocks. He's that value investor, too. He buys deep and he, he buys big when he buys. <laughs> he's one of those that isn't scared to buy a huge chunk of the company. No, he's not. Uh, but uh, yeah, GEOS, it's right back up at the area. Went through a quad top on Friday, clear 13. So needs a whole 13, uh, could continue higher. Yeah, uh, I like I like it. The breakout through thirteen. I actually like this on a technical basis. Yep. Uh, Mark Homer's asking about EGC, and I just saw there was just a little deal on that one here. Uh, it's being acquired by Cox Oil for nine dollars and ten cents uh, share in cash. It's a small oh, yeah. deal, three hundred twenty-two million. Uh, seems to be some believers in here. It's trading very, very, very close. Uh, I don't know. Too, yeah, app, that's so. just time value money. Yep. Yeah, not much meat on the bone in that one here. Uh, so, do we are we done with ratings here, Mr. Dennis? You want to talk? Yeah, to we now? can move off from weight ratings here, and I'll go back give you one more look at imbalances here. We only got five minutes left in the show, and they're starting to grow. They are to the sell side. GE one hundred twenty-four thousand to sell. What's the deal, GE? 
And I'm fully out of GE. We know that I sold it out. And now it's starting to break down here. You think we're going back to the lows here on GE? Seems like, you know, it gets some love there for a while. And then, you know, got to 1550. It looked like it might show some life. Suckered a few more people into it. And now it's right back down near the lows here again. Are we testing the 1280 level in GE? Uh, well, we're not that far away at 1323. You buying it there? No, I'm not. For the, I'm... for the buying it for the bounce off support? I think I would try it there just for a bounce play. At 1273, 1270. Yeah, the 1275, 1280. It bounced all there in March and April. had multiple lows down there. First time back, kind of bounce there so, once, isn't it? Well, yeah, Dennis, what about, and I say this to you a lot, if you think it's going there, then why don't you short it and then buy it there? Well, and... that'd be the better way. Yeah. And full yeah. disclosure, I actually am short it right now. That's just <laughs> a day. I just looked at my day trade, my overnight portfolio is short GE, but that's just an overnight trade. So I'll be covering that here. That's not a swing trade. It's an overnight trade. So. <laughs> Okay. Um, I, I don't even notice these half the time because I got so many positions in my portfolios there. But a relative relative weakness play that GE closed right on the lows. So you know how I'm a big fan of you know selling stocks that close on the lows because it scares the hell out of people the next day. So I like the follow through play. But obviously, overall market just driving GE down here this morning. Uh, Spinner uh, is no. Wait, were there other balances though besides GE? Yeah. So uh, Disney, we already talked about seventy nine thousand sell has grown though. Uh, IBM 49,000 to sell another tech play value play that's starting to leak here too. back below 145 is somewhat concerning there for IBM uh, Citigroup 68,000 to sell Bank of America 107,000 to sell the banks are looking a little bit weaker here again this morning TLT is up a little bit there European banks are somewhat down so there's a little weakness here overall just probably market driving them down but nothing too crazy there um, if I'm trying to look for you know CRM this one stands out Salesforce.com, 123,000 to sell. I don't know if there's a news headline there or not, but that's a big sound bounce. So 123,000, somebody or somebody this morning is uh, you know trying to get out of a huge chunk on the open. 123,000 to go in CRM. Talk that one for a sec, Joel. All right, CRM. Uh, Mark Benioff was, uh, I think he got some good ink in, uh, in um, Barron's over the weekend. I think he worked at Apple and Oracle. Uh, just uh, did a great, has done a great job uh, with the company. Made a new all time high on Thursday, 139.75. You know what? You got a double close here, folks. Double close at the all time closing high of 138.41. So uh, down a buck 41, I think. Uh, keep an eye on that as uh, resistance instead of the all time high at 39.75. If you're trying to take the other side of this imbalance, uh, you uh, if you're buying at 36.80 area, you're buying in the same lows uh, area of the lows from Thursday and Friday. The only problem is, is flush is that you have no cover until your three day low of 135.60 here. So kind of a thin one, kind of a big sell and balance. Boom. I don't know. I don't, I, don't think I'd be real happy to take a, uh, you know, big chunk of stock at one thirty six eighty here. Jump over uh, a couple of utility stocks are showing some bids. The utilities, we haven't given any love here too, but you know what, for all the rally that the food stocks have done, yes, the utilities have rallied a bit the last few days, but not getting the love, you know, that some of the other defensive names have been getting. I mean, you look at the XLU, yeah, we're off the lows, but we're not looking like those food stock charts. And often the utility stocks do move fairly well, you know, with the food because it's more defensive. They have caught a bit the last couple of days. Duke Energy is off the lows just from three days ago. DUK, DT Energy is coming off the lows. SO has bounced a bit here, but still utility stocks not getting the love that, you know, you think when you got a classic, you know, last couple of days of a little more risk off. Uh, and uh, the TLT uh, being mentioned here, you know, moving sure. with that. I mean, it's got a hard bottom in there on the monthlies. You bottom it, it's 115 area in 2017, 115 and a half, 116. You hit that area again uh, a couple last month, the 116 dollar area. Now trying to get off the mat. It's uh, it's the scenario, just the way the financials are going down. The way it looks like the TLT and the utilities are trying to turn, it looks like the Fed and the Fed notes are just not as hawkish as they want as far as just, you know, taking interest rates up, you know, continually to take it up a quarter point. The financials are reflecting that. So I think, the you know, the economy is doing good and stuff. I just think the Fed is just, a, you know, they're not going to raise raises as fast as people want. And that's hurting the financial stocks. 
AT&T, 112,000 to buy. AT&T getting a little bit of love here, actually, uh, just as of late, which is uh, interesting, uh, just last couple of days because you, you know, we sold off there, but we put on a bottom there, 32, uh, close 32, 10, 32, 15. Friday, we kind of blasted off from the same low around 32, 15. So you could go, you know, really last three days, three lows in the same area. And we kind of took off from there. So triple bottom, Joel, potentially. Yeah, AT&T. I like AT&T. And, uh, uh, Comcast bottom on that day too. They man, that thing uh, got blasted on the day that deal was done and hit 31 bucks where it had been support. And uh, now finding resistance here above $34. Uh, yes. Jazz Axel was mentioned uh, in Barron's positively this weekend, trading up a buck 10 here, but this, I should have told you to get up and lift an offer at 4 AM. in this one, uh, the, huh. th- the theory here is that, you need axles, even driverless cars need axles and that that's, you know, what the company, that's the does. Theory. yeah, yep. That's the Barron's theory. So a uh, good move for that. I don't know. Whew, I think I don't, I don't know if I'd like to buy it up a buck 10 and then uh, to wrap things up, uh, any news on Anth- uh, Athena health, a T H N. I mean, there's that deal on the table at one sixty. it's holding up there, but uh, you know, a little bit of a discount here. Uh, no word until it's official. So if you did catch this thing long, 125, 135 area, you know, be careful uh, because if this falls through, you could be right back in the gutter in that one. Now, uh, Dennis, any final words this morning? Uh, just caution, you know, on some of these plays that have really been taken off. We're seeing a little bit of a risk off market. Let's see what it does. Let's see if this market, it's very big day for it. So sometimes you see, you know, a little fall through, a little selling pressure on on friday now we get a little follow through here this morning Let's see if the buy the dippers come in and some of the you know the guns and if they come in then you know you're going to look at this market and say okay we're back to risk on again but if it follows through here today that's the concern so this is like a turning point day you want to see them come in here with this dip in the market and buy some of the leaders that have been the leaders and if you don't see that today then this two-day move could turn to something a little bit bigger so right now it's still just a two-day move classic two-day pullback not a big deal it would be a big deal as if we close week today. All right, Spencer, what's on the show for Tuesday? Uh, on Tuesday, we are going to be joined by Nick Shaheen. He joins us every Tuesday. He's the author of Create Income with Option Spreads. He's our go-to options expert for anything and everything, and he'll join us tomorrow at 835. So that's going to be it for us today. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. You can catch the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and tune in, or just watch the show on YouTube.com slash Benzinga. TV. Thanks to everyone who joined us in our chat today. Hope you all had a good weekend and have had a good day so far and hope you join us again on Tuesday.